The UFC and rivalries go together like peanut butter and jelly. Something about two fighters struggling to prove their superiority just keeps bringing people back for more. Rivals have been a part of all sports since the beginning of time, and they're certainly a part of MMA today. We are going to be taking a look back at some of the biggest and best rivalries in UFC history. This is Ultimate MMA. When you think of heavyweight Daniel Cormier, you might be inclined to believe that John Jones is his rival. But Cormier himself has recently stated that he prefers his rivalry with Miocic because of the competitive challenge. We'll let John Jones decide how he feels about that. Miocic and Cormier first fought at UFC 226, and while it was a great fight, it was also an incredibly short one. Miocic landed a significant right hand there. Already more strikes landed and thrown during the entire Derek Lewis Francis Ngannou fight. Oh, look at that! One, two by DC. And then he clinches. Exactly what you gotta do. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Miocic handled DC with some great boxing and combinations up front, but Cormier was able to land one solid hook, and it was all over. Cormier got the knockout in round one of his first fight. Stipe came back for another shot at the belt at UFC 241, and this time he wouldn't leave empty-handed. DC knows he's oh! By the fourth round, Miocic had landed several body shots that DC had no answer for. Miocic scored a TKO before the end of the round, leaving the rivalry record at 1-1. One one. Miocic and Cormier will wrap up the trilogy on August 15th, 2020 at UFC 252. Who do you think will take home the win? George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes are two of the most decorated mixed martial artists of all time. Each of the times these fighters met, there was a title on the line. For their first fight at UFC 50, GSP admits he was a little too starstruck to do well against the champ, Hughes. Matt Hughes was one of George's heroes, so when St. Pierre entered the octagon, he was low on confidence. Hughes took out the French Canadian with a brutal armbar in the first round. Finish this round one with a flurry and score some points. Matt Hughes with a submission and it's all over! It's nice. all over! Matt Hughes with a submission victory! Bang! But what we love about George St. Pierre is that he never stops learning from his mistakes. By the time he came back for a rematch against Hughes at UFC 65, GSP was ready to win. Oh! Shot. In the second round, GSP took Hughes down and proceeded to ground and pound his way to victory, setting the rivalry at a one-to-one -one tie, setting up the third and final showdown. UFC 79 would decide once and for all who was the superior fighter between the two legends. Matt Hughes is really getting overwhelmed in this fight. George just stepped over for a triangle. 20 seconds. He's got a Kimura on one side, a possible triangle on the other. Trying to submit Hughes. Not quite yet. And it's all over. And it's all over. George Rush St. Pierre defeats Matt Hughes again. In round two, St. Pierre took his hero Hughes to the ground and won via submission putting to bed any debate on who was the greatest welterweight champion. Another set of heavyweight fighters with a rivalry for the ages are Brock Lesnar and Frank Mir. These two went toe-to-toe -to -toe three times and were notorious for being some of the most entertaining fighters in the UFC. These two had their first octagon match at UFC 81, which was one of those rare times that Brock Lesnar was embarrassingly defeated. It started out good for Lesnar, an early ground and pound to start round one. But quickly, Mir turned everything around and took Lesnar out with a deep knee bar. It's going to be very difficult for him to pass the guard of Frank Mir. It's a very unusual guard. He's going for a foot lock. Frank Mir's going to land. Lesnar! He's going to land. 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 He's going to land.
Lesnar came back for vengeance against Mir at UFC 100, the centennial event of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Lesnar, he's got so much power in those fists, Mike. This time, Lesnar dominated the entire fight, ending up on top of Mir and letting the hammer fist fly. By the end of it, Mir looked like he just got back from a bad plastic surgeon. It was long requested that these two arch enemies fight for a third and final match, but it sadly wasn't meant to be. I guess the debate of Lesnar versus Mir will continue on indefinitely. Since he's made more money for the UFC than basically any other fighter, we figured Conor McGregor would have to make the list. The Notorious is notorious for a lot of trash talk, and really angering his opponents before they meet in the octagon. Nate Diaz was always happy to take on that challenge. These two welterweight fighters first battled each other at UFC 196, and they've been bitter rivals ever since. Despite McGregor bloodying his face and dominating the first round with heavy shots, Nate Diaz came back strong in the second round. Tagged McGregor and marched forward, eventually getting the Irishman to the ground and winning by submission. That wasn't going to sit right with Conor's ego. The two came back for UFC 202 and went all five rounds in what was one of the closest matches in UFC history. When you get this much buildup and this much anticipation for a fight, it's absolutely wonderful when the fight is like the one we're watching right now, Joe. Absolutely. But by the end, the Notorious scored a win by majority decision, leaving McGregor and Diaz one to one. We've yet to get a third match to settle the score once and for all, but there's still plenty of time and plenty of money to be made on a rematch. There's no way we could get through a rivalries video without talking about the rivals who started it all. Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock had their first fight at the very first UFC event, UFC 1. Gracie was coming from a jiu-jitsu background and Shamrock was considered a shoot fighter at the time. At the very beginning of the round, Gracie got Shamrock to the ground and forced the shoot fighter to tap. Same thing he did with his previous opponent. And Hoist, watch this, there goes Hoist. He looks like he's going for the back. The two came back for more over a year later at UFC 5, with Shamrock eager to prove himself after his loss. At this point, Gracie had never lost a fight in the octagon. Could Shamrock really be the first? Certainly nobody can claim this is awfully too violent. In this kind of a position, there's not a whole lot happening. It's so intricate, so subtle. Both fighters had a strong ground game, spending most of the fight hugging each other. Ultimately, they were just too evenly matched, and the fight ended in a draw, upsetting many of the audience and fans. The two would have their final fight at Bellator 149, with Gracie taking the win. This took the rivalry to 2-0-1 for Gracie. Who's going to win, Miocic or Cormier? You think we'll ever get a third McGregor and Diaz fight? Are there any rivalries we missed? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to know more about the UFC, hit that subscribe button and check back every week for more Ultimate MMA.